Hey everybody, this is Michael and Chris. Welcome to episode 54 of the Dodgeball Marketing Podcast. Hey Chris. How you doing, man? Good. Uh, Happy Friday. And uh, this episode, we're gonna talk about SEO Basics, five link building best practices. Uh, We always say that we're not an SEO podcast or an online marketing podcast for experts. We're for marketers and for beginners, people who are learning. And so this is a little bit of an introduction to how to think about linking um, pages and content on-site, off-site, all the above, to uh, make the most. So Chris, why don't you take the first one? Yeah, so the first um, link building best practice is make sure you're inter- interlinking between your pages. And so yeah. a lot of people think of linking, they think of like establishing backlinks from other site linking to you, but it's also important to let Google know what pages on your site you think are most important. So one of the ways you can do that is make sure that your navigation on the top is linking to your most important pages. So this becomes obvious when you look at the way most websites are built, but if you're a local services company, you're gonna put your services pages on the front because those are most important. So, And Um, sometimes people kind of mess that up. Sometimes they just have one link for services and they uh, sort of, uh, I don't know, downgrade all of their most important things to a second level because logically it makes sense but it might be good to kind of minimize that other stuff and move a couple of those services up a level. Right, right. You might do the same thing with locations. If you're if you're a local business that has three locations, you can put all those locations there. But so that so that's the first thing is make sure all the pages that are most important to you are linked in the top navigation. You probably already do it anyway when you just think through your site what's mm-hmm. most important. But that's important to Google to to communicate what pages are most important to you. And then it, that will influence how Google views your website as well. Um, and then all our services and subservices pages linked. Okay, so um, mm-hmm. a service page would be something like, we always use the painter example because it's easy, but like a, a service page might be um, indoor painting. And then a subservice might be gymnasium painting, something mm-hmm. like that. Sure. So like a service within a service. So um, make sure that you're creating, um, if you're creating subservice pages, that those are linked back to your service page. So you might have a uh, that service page for indoor painting with a bullet list of various indoor painting options, um, mm-hmm. uh, services, and you make sure those are linked to the appropriate s- service pages. Also, if you're doing content pieces, so if you're if you've got a blog going or some kind of newsfeed uh, section of your website, and you're mentioning those services in the context of that blog, make sure you link that back mm-hmm. to your indoor paint or let's Interior say you're painting. Yeah. Right. So, or a good example is if you were doing, if it's like the gymnasium painting example. Mm-hmm. So if you were doing a post on uh, best paint types to use for gymnasium painting, mm-hmm. right. Um, the, a natural place for that to link would be back to the gymnasium subservices page. So look for all of your content on opportunities to link back to your most important pages as well. Not just the top nav, but every, all the other places where you're, putting content. Yeah. And be sure to use keyword rich text in your links uh, as opposed to click here or uh, read more. Uh, Click here and read more a little bit empty calories. If you're linking to something that's really specific, it's great to also uh, use keywords in that text. So what, you know, what you said in the body of the copy, where where there are natural places, uh, that's that's really an important point. Uh, Next best practice, number two, um, look for backlinking opportunities. Uh, One of the toughest things about doing online marketing and doing SEO is getting really good links from other websites back to your website. Uh, One of the ways that is good to do that is uh, by managing any uh, offline properties that you control. Uh, These could be things like your YouTube channel or your social media channels. Uh, Also, other websites that you have. Uh, if you have other websites that are appropriate, uh, you know, for example, if you have adjacent businesses or something, uh, not physically adjacent, but subject matter adjacent, um, and they have separate websites, you can you can cross promote between them, and that's actually going to send a signal to search engines about the destination website. Hey, somebody out there is linking to us. That's good. And the higher the domain authority of those other websites, the better. Uh, and you know, this is very debatable. Google kind of goes back and forth. Google says that. If you link to a a website with lower domain authority, it doesn't hurt you, but a lot of people think it does. Uh, But generally, if you have a high domain authority website linking to you, that's just good. Uh, So thinking about opportunities for that uh, through PR, 
uh, if you have the opportunity to produce uh, a press release and distribute it uh, through PR Newswire or any other kind of ways to do that, uh, that being picked up and news stories being carried about your URL uh, or your business are really good because that's creating links. Uh, some other ideas, uh, and one of the most popular things people are trying to do right now um, is uh, guest blogging. And this is really good where if you have an existing relationship already that's really strong, so, you know, think somebody would kind of do anything for you. Uh, you can take turns guesting on the other person's website and uh, trading links. Um, this is really valuable um, when you're thinking about a relationship between a company and their vendors, having a set of vendors uh, who can come in and provide really highly relevant content for your audience. So it's not throwaway content. You want real stuff. You don't just want to write content for search engines, but real stuff for people. You could have a highly knowledgeable vendor come in and talk about certain products that, that your audience wants to know about, and they're going to get a link back to their website. And then conversely, if you have a vendor that, uh, that you promote a lot or use a lot of their products or services, they can say, Hey, here's a case study. Here's a company out there that's using us. And, uh, we want to tell you about this great experience they had using us, uh, as a case study. And so that's a really good example of uh, high ticket B2B or, or sophisticated marketing guest blogging. We're not talking about, you know, pictures of your, your trip to the beach. <laughs> We're talking about uh, sophisticated content marketing across audiences in a, in a set of relationships. Uh, yeah. Another thing, you know, there are other things that you can do, uh, you know, managing online directories, listings, uh, back to the website, Google Maps. Uh, uh, sometimes with affiliate marketing, you can get affiliates to generate uh, links back into your website. So there's a whole big complicated world of, uh, of ideas uh, uh, using um, posts and content on sites like Quora is something that we've talked about before. But yeah, any of those backlinks that have good, highly relevant pages to the subject matter linking back to you, those are good. Yeah. And, and uh, conversely, you can look for local link opportunities. So these are less about subject matter um, alignment like you were talking about and more about local like they're geographically um, local to you mm -hmm. so um, you know the way I think about this is it's the best thing to do is to actually just be involved in your local community and these will just present themselves so uh, um, a, a couple examples are if you have a local chamber of commerce most chamber of commerce has a have member directories and they offer you a link back from that mm -hmm. so those are valuable any local directories for you know you have neighborhood business directors all mm -hmm. kinds of directories out there that are sort of locally focused um, community events you've participated in maybe you maybe your company sponsored a local charity 5k that's a link opportunity if they've got a website that can link back to you. Um, maybe you sponsor a local little league team. I mean, there's all kinds of ways that you can mm. find out what's going on in the community, get involved in it and, um, and see if you can generate local link opportunities from that. Yeah. If you're, if your staff is going out to volunteer, uh, with a church event or a community service event, uh, participating in a, as a, as a corporate entity and asking them to uh, give you a little shout out on the website. That's a way to do it. Uh, anything where money is being used, uh, if you're supporting or donating to something, they're, they're generally pretty happy to share a link on their website. Yeah. Yeah. Next up, number four, post to Q&A sites. Uh, we talked about, about this a little bit uh, in a previous segment, but let's dive in a little deeper. Uh, a good way to become known as a subject matter expert with search engines is to go to the websites where the highest level of expertise about that subject matter exists. These can be sites like Wikipedia, Quora, Reddit, and working with them is not always easy. Uh, and doing it once and forgetting about it is not going to be effective. So let's talk about how to think about this. Number one, make a list of the places that have relevant content to your subject matter. If your subject matter is cybersecurity, you can actually find quite a bit of activity happening on sites like Core and Reddit around the topic of cybersecurity. Uh, there are actually entire communities out there for many, many subjects. Um, it, it would actually be tougher to find a subject matter that doesn't have a passionate community. And so a lot of these uh, sites have pages where folks are going in and they're really building a reputation in these communities as being an authority. So here are the, here are the three tips that we recommend for using these communities. Number one, 
uh, don't try to do all of them. Instead, pick the ones where the highest relevance of subject matter exists. So if you're a company that offers cybersecurity and you look at Reddit and say, wow, there's a really strong cybersecurity community there, maybe mm -hmm. say, hey, we're going to start posting to Reddit. We're going to answer and comment and engage on Reddit. And uh, that's going to be our thing. Don't try to, don't get too sp uh, spread too thin and say, well, there is a little Facebook group and there is this other um, discus discussion board on this other website and there's Reddit and there's Quora and we're going to try to do them all. We're going to be really aggressive to try to do them all. Uh, try to try to be master of one of them first before you expand. Uh, so uh, pick your channels wisely, pick well. Uh, number two, understand that the publishing process for all of these is very different and some are easy, some are hard. Uh, Quora, Reddit, very easy to uh, integrate into a workflow. Wikipedia, very difficult. Uh, and Wikipedia is more meant to be the official encyclopedia of the internet, not a thriving active discussion yeah. environment. So for something like Wikipedia, we recommend dialing back the frequency and really taking, we, we're now, if we're building a page around a company on um, Wikipedia, we're, we're saying this is gonna take us 12 months to yeah. do. You have to go in real slow and real light uh, with Wikipedia. You can't just start go pushing stuff to the Wikipedia <laughs> domain and have it accepted. Yeah, because it, it's, it's got to be accepted by the team of moderators, right? That's right. Yeah. And so Wikipedia is a very different kind of filter. Uh, but once you get in there and get established uh, through best practices for publishing to Wikipedia, having that URL pointed back to your website mm -hmm. will be very valuable. Uh, and we've done this a number of times, but we, we talk about it as a six to 12 month strategy. Uh, you can't just go load up a bunch of your sales uh, propaganda onto a Wikipedia page about your company and expect it to stay. It won't stay. Uh, number three, live out of an editorial schedule. Whatever your plan is, whatever you're planning to do and engage, it's going to have to depend on consistency rather than passion or how you feel. Um, if you assign to your CEO to go out to Reddit once a month and say something smart, they're going to do it once. Nobody's going to say anything about it. And then they're never going to do it again. What you have to have for all of your online marketing is a central repository of dates, formats, and who's doing what. And we call that a master editorial schedule. Mm -hmm. And you're posting to these offsite properties to get inbound links are no different. Uh, put it in as separate rows with dates. Uh, if you're using Basecamp or some other project management software to run your business, uh, break these up as separate Basecamp actions and uh, run the play. Don't do it for six months or a year. Don't do it for less than six months or a year without evaluating mm -hmm. it. Or uh, don't, excuse me, don't do it for six, less than six months or a year um, before you evaluate it. Don't judge it too quickly. You got to run this type of tactic for six to 12 months to even get a little flicker of value out of it. Uh, because what's happening is those inbound links are, are getting built over time. Yeah. Uh, and it's just one tactic of a, a full robust SEO strategy. Yeah. Chris, why don't you take us out with our last item? All right, last one. And this is more of a uh, kind of a user experience thing mm -hmm. than an SEO thing. I don't think it affects your SEO at all, but it's to make sure when you do link externally to your website or um, off your website, yeah, off your website, make sure that it opens in a new tab. So most um, content management systems will allow you to control whether you just zap someone in the same window to the new website or if it pops open a new tab. And so we want to like, we, we want to include references that we, um, we want to include links to references from the website that are relevant to people, but we don't want to like unnecessarily draw people away from our website. Yeah. And so if you link, if you don't link it into a new tab, you run the risk of losing that visitor. And so, and that's one less person that will lose track of you, maybe not convert, maybe not call, whatever. So a good middle ground there to serve the users in terms of providing them information and not lose them down a, a wormhole is to make sure that all of your links open in a new tab. Yeah, and I would add to that, I, I don't like ever having a link off to off site in the top nav of the website. I think if you have in your top nav something where you absolutely have to link somebody away from the site, what I would prefer is take them to an intermediate page where you explain, hey, this is going to be an offsite website. This is what's going to happen. But if you absolutely have to have something at the top of every page that uh, takes people either to a login screen or a customer portal, something that's just 
by definition got to be on a different domain. I would take that and break that out as a button or a, a link separate from your main navigation area. Yeah. I think if you have something like customer portal or patient login, get that off and up and to the right somewhere in a different corner so that when they're on their main on your main nav area, they're thinking, okay, this is where I can kind of drill in and find what I'm looking for to do next. Yeah. And all those links should be to uh, pages on the same domain. Right. Yeah. Right. Good. Uh, hey, that's episode 54. Uh, thanks everybody. Uh, and uh, yeah, follow us on uh, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, LinkedIn at Dodgeball SEO and uh, drop your questions there. Please subscribe and follow us on uh, YouTube in particular. And uh, yeah, thanks. We'll see you on the next one. Later. later.